Romans 8, 28, and we're following up with yesterday. We talked about how God predetermined, wrote a blueprint for your life before the foundation of the world. Remember, this is the same God who knows how many hairs are on your head this morning or how many sparrows killed over in the backyard. He can count the stars. In fact, he named them. We can't even count them. He names them. He's got a name for them. And then we question him at times. Or we look and say, hey, don't you understand, Lord? Yeah, he, I think he does. Romans 8, 28. We know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them that are called according to his purpose. And it's a merciful God. In other words, what he's saying here as well is we all sin and fall short. But if we get back up, he can take that and make it good. We've heard the term, it's all good. Well, in his realm, it's all good. When you get back in his realm, hey, we're good. I, the Lord's looking down at you going, I got this. Will you give it to me? Then verse 29, for whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. So his son, Jesus Christ, set the example. What could happen if somebody allowed the Holy Spirit to have free reign and rule in their life? That's what he wants in your life. But it's our, it's our carnal man that limits him. It's our thinking. Unless we renew our mind and step out of the box. If the Lord asks you to step out in faith, go for it. He's not going to ask you to do something and then and then bail on you or leave you hanging. In verse 30, moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called. And whom he called, he justified. And whom he justified, them he glorified. So it's a process. He predetermined your life. He had a plan for you. And it's the only plan that will get you home. It's the only one that will get you access to your eternal reward. It's his way or the highway. You have to do. Only those that do the will of God will inherit eternal life. So you're called. You answer the calling. A calling's an invitation. And then you're justified. You're justified in Christ. You're now walking by faith and not sight. You're trusting more in the completed work that he's done and less and lest in the work you think you need to do. In fact, in John 6, 28, they asked the Lord a simple question. What should I do to do the works of God? And he had one response. Believe on him whom he sent. Hmm. Is it really that simple? It really is. And when he justified, then he also glorified. That's what you want to end up. You want to end up with a glorified body in a heavenly place where our Lord ended up. That's the whole reason you started this salvation process. You want to make it to the end. And there's no reason why you shouldn't. He's because you're going to be held accountable. He's going to look and say, wait a minute, I, I set everything up. I said I had a very good plan for you. Uh, I wanted to hear a very good response. What happened? And then you're going to have to tell him what happened. Why did you not come up there with a very good answer to your life and what you did with it? And that it was according to the counsel of his will. And verse 31, what shall we say then to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? Wow. So you've got God. It's God that works in you. Both to will and to do of his good pleasure. He's willing. He wants to. The question is, will you let him? Will you let him out? Will you let him loose? Will you let the spirit have its way? Or are you going to still try to figure it out? Or have you got your own plan? Well, let me know how that works out. And when you're done, come on back and we'll start again. I've been there, done it. I've done the not so merry go round and spinning, spinning wheel round and round. And then I get done and I'm kind of groggy and nauseous. And I go, gee, I don't think I want to do that anymore. Good. Then why waste your time? And he that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us, for all of us, there again, all. He's no respecter of persons. He delivered him up for us all. He died for the sin of the whole world. There's no excuse. Whosoever shall call upon, put your name there. When I call upon the name of the Lord, I'm saved. 
I have access to, to this heavenly realm. How shall we not with them also freely give us all things? One of my pet peeves I have is people putting a price tag on salvation, and it seems like all I hear is money, money, money. It seems like people are more concerned with their financial outcome than your spiritual one. And it seems like while the Lord is asking what's in your heart, man and his preachers are asking what's in your wallet. These things are freely given. Now, don't get me wrong. If you're in a place and you're being fed and the Lord asks you to do something to support, do it. But let the Lord do it and not don't pack your bags on a on a guilt trip by these uh, peddlers, these cheap hucksters, these carnies that call themselves preachers. God didn't do that. Lord didn't do that. Let's go to Ephesians 1. And verse 3, it says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. You got it all. You know, when he accepted the Lord, he gave you the whole thing. He's not holding back, you know. It's not like there's going to be another outpouring of the Spirit. He poured out his Spirit. He emptied the bucket. There's not going to be another one. If you're not utilizing what you have now, there's not going to be another one. I don't know why people think that someday there's going to be more of an outpouring. There isn't. He gave us the measure of faith. The same measure of faith that the, his son had. So you don't get more faith. What you do is you see and understand more of what you were given in the beginning. That's all. You, that's what. And then you develop that. You learn to walk more by faith. You understand how it works. You understand and become confident that you're going to get his results when you step out in faith and what he's asking. You just develop your faith. Nobody gets more faith. So you can sit there and put all the headphones on and read, 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 read. But you're not going to get more faith. You need to hear and then be a doer of the word in order for that faith to be developed. And then you'll see more clear how it operates. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened. And the church should be searching more for the spiritual blessings and less than this carnal nonsense that they preach today. That just tells you the realm they're in. If you've been given all spiritual blessings, let's go, let's go for it. Let's go get all. Let's get it all. Why not? According as he has chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love, having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ, to himself according to the good pleasure of his will. You know, the Bible talks about not being self-willed. If you can get self out of the way, then you can operate according to his will or your self-will, or we get stubborn, or we get mad, or we get angry. We don't get our way. Or we just don't let patience have its perfect work. You know, <laughs> man has deadlines. They set up times and say, well, if nothing happens by then, that's the deadline. Well, God's thrown you a lifeline and said, get, let go of the deadline. To the praise and glory of his grace, wherein he hath made us accepted in the beloved. And if we get down, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. You want riches in life? I know a lot of people talk about riches. Oh, the church should be rich. Yeah. How about rich in faith? How about the riches of his grace? Those you can't, those are priceless. That'll get you an eternal reward. Riches of this world are, are, are short-lived. And the way things are going one of these days, your money could, our money system could, could fall apart any time. It's just a house of cards. Wherein he hath abounded uh, toward us in all wisdom and prudence, having made known unto us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure, which he hath proposed in himself, that in a dispensation of times he might gather together in one, all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him, in whom also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestinated according to the purpose of him who works all things after the counsel of his own will, that we should be to the praise of his glory who first trusted in Christ. So predestination is not complicated. All it's saying is God's, God made a plan for your life. He mapped it out before the foundation of the world, and now he's poured out his spirit upon all flesh. 
And he's given you the opportunity to partake of all these spiritual blessings in a heavenly place. Well, if it's in a heavenly place, then why don't you go up to that heavenly place and find out what's going on up there? He lit a candle in there. The Bible says he lit a candles, candle so all could see. Yes, so you'd be enlightened. How do you get to a heavenly place? By spending time in prayer and in the word. And then you start seeing things from a heavenly viewpoint. He starts showing you all the spiritual blessings he's blessed you with in Christ. Those are the riches you want to pursue. In fact, you know, I listen to some of these messages. Oh, well, get, get rich quick. Get, well, the Bible says when they suppose gain is godliness, from such withdraw yourself. You shouldn't be walking up, writing them a check. You should be heading for the exit. Instead, we do the opposite. People are doing the opposite. They're supporting these fools in their folly. And if the Christians had learned to rightly divide the word, they wouldn't be wasting their time, talent, or treasure on these people. On these false prophets we'd send them back to the carnivals where they could go back and be uh, a carny where they came from in the first place Isaiah 14 and I'm in verse 26 this is the purpose that is proposed upon the whole earth and this is the hand that is stretched out upon all nations and the Lord said that he poured out a spirit upon all flesh he's reaching out to any, all, who will call upon the name of the Lord. For the Lord of hosts has proposed, and who shall disannul? And his hand is stretched out, and who shall turn it back? Basically, if we don't show up someday at the throne of God in a very good place, in a very good manner spiritually, you're actually going to be calling him a liar. Because you're going to say, you knew, basically you're going to tell them, I know better than you do. I had a plan of life that I felt was better than yours. Well, for lack of a better term, that'll get you fired. That'll get you uh, uh, a cabin near the lake of fire, a permanent residence. You don't want that. There's no reason to. You've been blessed with all spiritual blessings. You've been given the riches, his grace through faith. He has gracefully reached out to all mankind and said, here, take it. it. Luke 12, 32 in that area, it says, it's my father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. And now church, take it. Take it to the goal line. And there's an old song that said, take it to the limit. Today, take it beyond the limit of the flesh. One more time. Thank you.